progress. Bonjour à tous, bienvenue à cette deuxième journée. Good morning everyone and welcome to the second day of our conference on Ignatian spirituality. Thank you so much for having come back or for joining us for the first time today and welcome each one. Before beginning, I'd like to hand the microphone over to Jose Sanchez, who is our Director of Communications for some technical points. So I'm going to speak English now so that people who are going to be listening to interpretation will know where to go. Hello. Uh, so for those who prefer English, uh, if you want to choose a language that this happens, so that you prefer English, uh, in order to do that, if you're on a computer, in the controls of the session, click on the button interpretation, and then click on the language that you wish to hear, in this case, English. If you're on a mobile device, in your meeting controls, in the session controls, in the front of, uh, in the middle of the screen uh, that you're looking at right now, press uh, on the uh, button with the three little dots or plus, and then press on a language interpretation. Finally, press uh, or choose a language that you want to hear. Also, remember uh, once again that that uh, the uh, sessions will be sent to all those who registered by five business days, the recordings of the sessions by five business days after the event. Uh, les enregistrements pour toutes les sessions seront envoyés. Uh, so we're going to be sending all of the sessions in five business days at the latest. And please remember that you can ask questions. All you have to do is to click on the chat button to offer your question. And we always try to answer the questions towards the end of the session. But before introducing Father Mark Rizzetto, I'd like to make a conference with using photo, who's going to talk to us about photography and the spirituality. First of all, we'll talk about the territory on which we stand. Our Holy Father addressed himself to the delegation at the Vatican this week, and he said, I am asking God's forgiveness, and I can tell you from the bottom of my heart that I am very sorry. Uh, so, since we are together today, in a virtual manner, we'd like to begin by honoring the native people on whose land we stand today. This territorial recognition is important in order to renew our commitment and also to renew our responsibility for the relationships between nations and our own uh, agreements with the native peoples from one coast to the other. And even elsewhere, we recognize the ancestral lands of the Métis people, the members of the First Nations that are all living on these lands, we realize we have done wrong in the past, and each one of us in our own way wants to go forward in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. Having said that now, I'd like to begin by introducing Father Mark Rizzetto, who is going to be giving his talk. He's a Jesuit father from the Manresa Center in Quebec City, and he's been there since 2020 already. Before that, he was in charge for youth ministry in the Diocese of Quebec, spiritual minister to young people in Quebec, also a chaplain of a high school in French and on a military for the military in Quebec. Father Marc Rizzetto has already uh, is a great photographer and he has had exhibits of his works. And if you'd like to go and see them, just be on the outlook for when he has his exhibits. So let us go to Father Mark now and see how we can enter into Ignatian spirituality through photography. Thank you. Mm. I can't, um, I'm sorry, I can't translate because we don't hear him. Right. Thank God. Okay. We have no sound. We're very sorry.
We're sorry for the technical difficulties this morning. There is no audio for the presentation, so we're going to start again. We're very sorry. Well, good morning to each and every one of the participants of this seminar today. I am taking advantage of this opportunity to thank all of the organizers of the Company of Jesus and also to thank each one of you who registered and have come to participate in this conference and in this dialogue on the theme of spirituality and photography. I am Mark Rizzetto and I am a Jesuit working in the beautiful city of Quebec at the spiritual center called Manresa, which is one of the works of the Company of Jesus or the Society of Jesus. And by way of the Ignatian exercises, Manresa wanted to kind of democratize the experience of the spiritual life and all of the paths that lead to God with many lay people and many others who kind of take interest and come close and approach the spirituality and it's become like a snowball effect and that is why today's conference on photography is rooted and flows from this place where i live i love photography i also love beauty and nature and it's part of my life it surrounds me it lives within me it is what I do, like a hobby, and is what I also do to pray. I observe nature on, on an ongoing basis, the place where I live, from the place where I go. I love cameras, and I like to use them to be able to observe and to be able to situate and to use photography as a means to get to know my environment and perhaps to get to know it better because it helps me to slow down at times and to realize just what is happening all around me and within myself to be more attentive to be more observant to be more present to these various situations to a particular area to a community and so in a certain way i can say that there are things that I see every day when I go by in the city, and I never really saw how important they were until the time that I was able to take a picture. When I took the photograph, from that moment on, these objects, these things, these buildings take on a new life, a new dimension. I believe that pictures, photography, images have a potential of changing our perspective, my point of view on myself, and on the beauty and the richness all around us. I love to use photography as a means of self-expression through the images, through the faces. It's possible for us to discover the goodness of creation and of all of God's cosmos. And what I really like is to go out and to take pictures of new places or places that I am familiar with also. And that is how I am able to discover what God created, that it be in the face of a human being or in the beauty of a tree or of a very banal scene in life. And so it is in this way that I remember that God's creation every day is present to me through the lens, but also behind the lens or my phone. It is a kind of prayer for me. Before going any further in the talk, I would like to stop and think about um, what contemplation or what is Ignatian contemplation? Contemplation or contemplative prayer can be very intimidating for certain people who at the outside are not familiar with this type of terminology. So. I'm going to attempt to explain it to you as easily and as simply as I can. First of all, by reminding people who are with us at this conference that they are probably doing it already and sometimes doing it without even knowing they are doing it. 
And we can also say that one of the spiritual authors calls contemplation. Another might call meditation. And another might call it prayer. So I think in, in general, a definition that I could propose would be that prayer is similar to a conversation, a conscious conversation with God. Contemplative, con, con, in nation contemplation, however, is even more specific than that because we turn to our imagination. It enters into play in order to place yourself within one of the scripture passages or a scene with from from scripture and it calls upon our senses and our imagination i guess we could say with contemplation we also speak of a prayer a prayer where we speak to god where we speak out or in silence or with a prayer let the our father and Meditation, I would say, meditation uh, is kind of similar to thinking or reflecting. To describe th the three basic ways of praying, these three basic forms of prayer engage the mouth with the word, the head, meditation, the heart, contemplation of the person who is praying. But what is the relationship between vocal meditation and contemplative prayer in our lives and in our spiritual life more particularly vocal prayer is something that i use mainly during the eucharist or when i say an hour father or a prayer that might come spontaneously when i participate in a eucharistic celebration at the chapel of the community uh, at the mass sometimes uh, there are words that we say on a regular basis and sometimes i find that a particular phrase or even one word that is familiar might all of a sudden take on a whole new meaning a whole new dimension it's almost as if i had never heard it in the past hmm. You might ask me, or I might ask myself, how come I'm, how come that's happening to, to that has got my attention today? So this is something that is always surprising to us. One of the things that I continue to be meditation isn't as content heavy as contemplation. It's the kind of prayer that is focused or centered on what I like to do once in a while, uh, in particular when i have a lot of things you know going on in my mind or i'm stressed out or i'm very concerned about something it's a prayer that is just taking time to be with jesus or to be with god to take a break to stop to take a pause and to just be in the presence of jesus or the presence of god so we are invited to do a thousand and one things every day but maybe the fact that we would take some time to go on the outside, this is what is can do the be, the most good. To rest in the presence of God is one is a wonderful way and a great way for us to pray. The different ways of praying are as numerous as there are people. Many are satisfied or can identify with adoration or the Eucharist or benediction as a means of contemplation, whereas others, um, they will have devotions that are different, different means, different possibilities for us to enter into dialogue or into relationship. I would use contemplation in its broadest sense. Therefore, uh, to try to imagine or try to imagine yourself in the presence of God or to be seated next to Jesus and to really take advantage of the present moment. We see and we take the time to observe what is happening, the type of emotion, memories, desires, hopes, in, inspirations that come to us and ask ourselves, what, what is God trying to say to me through this prayer experience? Or perhaps God just wants 
just wants us to take pleasure in being in his presence or in presence of the divine one. If you are people who are more imaginative, um, why wouldn't you try Ignatian contemplation then? There exist many different ways to pray. And now I'd like to invite you to call upon them and to use them. And not to be too attached to methods or to rules that we know about each one of these possibilities, because sometimes they come together and people ask, am I doing it right? Well, the important thing is not to ask yourself if you're doing it right, but to, to begin and to just keep going with that. In the use of photography, I'm going to share up here on the screen some of the pictures I've taken. You know, I was talking, first of all, about contemplation. And so as an example of contemplation, we're mainly concerned with photography. There are no bad or no good pictures. It could be the use of your portable phone, or it could it doesn't matter like what means you use to take the picture. It could also be a picture that might you might find in on social media or in the newspapers. So some examples of that would be certain of these that you have up here to help our imagination kind of like get in gear. So in Ignatian contemplation, we talk about meditating with a scripture text. But contemplation with photography or art is to read, read, eh? that's the verb, the verb to read, which is an active verb, which is transposed into an image to a photo, to a work of art. And in the same way, I become aware of a text that I read, and through contemplation, I can take a moment to look at my screen or the support or the photography that I have and take the time to try to discover what it is that What's attracting me? Why do I see a picture and something jumps out at me more than others? Well, the idea is that before beginning this time of prayer with a picture or with a photo, an image, you sort of have to go shopping. You have to choose one. The time of prayer is where you have to choose the photo, but to sort of have an image or or a picture that you want to contemplate. Why? Well, you might wonder why this picture? Why? What is, what is it about this picture? What made me choose it? What is it that I like about it? What do you like in that picture that you can contemplate or is attracting you? Is it a memory, perhaps? It jogs a memory or someone that you know, someone you loved, or does it evoke happy moments when you were with your family or a time of vacation? Something that relates you to something special. And in what way are you able to discover the active presence of God in through those images, through what you see? Take a moment to just think, to feel, to experience the emotion that might emerge from the exercise of this contemplation. I'm referring to this picture here. In a park, we have a statue of a lady, a woman, who is kind of like the thinker, right? She's got her, her two arms on her legs and in the background we see a person a man who also is pensive and and holding his own chin up like the woman so this image for me evokes time time that is going by for people like me who pray to reflect who ask questions about life 
this is something very banal in itself because in the majority of parks of the world there are people that take on this posture there's absolutely nothing extraordinary in this picture but for me it does it brings back memories of a time when I was in another country and a scene where that I was able to capture on my camera. And for me, it's a very precious memory, a souvenir. So this way of praying for me, which is photography, nurtures my imagination, invites me to observe, but also to be aware of things that challenge me, that call me forth, that are more specific or particular. And for me, in Ignatian contemplation, it is more something that is, as I said, nurturing. It, is, it, it speaks to me because with Ignatian contemplation, when you use scripture texts, it makes it possible for me to be with Christ, to stand there next to him and to allow him to remind me that he is risen and he is alive. He is present for me and for you through the spirit. He acts through prayer. And so it is a true encounter with Christ. Uh, photography is a way for us. It's not new, but something complementary. It's not the only way of praying with photography. It's not necessarily what brings me, leads me into dialogue, but it, it opens up that door for me. And in the spiritual exercises, there are two times of contemplation of the incarnation. We imagine the blessed Trinity of the, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit who come down from heaven on down to earth in order to come and to be with and to sort of look at what's the state of the world of where we are at at this moment. And so through those visits, the persons of the Trinity look at the people. They look at the, all the difficulties they are going through, the beauty of the place, the challenges that are present. And this image of God who is Father, Son, and Spirit, who descend. It's almost as if God is looking at creation. And so myself, I am an integral part of creation, whereby I am invited to observe the world in which I live in order to kind of like go and gather little parcels of that, little fragments of it so that I can understand it better, discover it more, and then be able to reveal it. Even though Ignatius um, talked about this Ignatian contemplation, which is very popular today, Ignatius isn't the one who invented this way of doing it. It's Francis of Assisi mainly, who encouraged people at this time to pray, to go to the Christmas scene, to the nativity scene, and pray and think about what was happening. And that's why we have so many things in our churches, which is a form of art, whereby we invited people to come and to use this way of praying with images to help the believers to enter into dialogue and into relationship in order to be able to focus and to be able to find support on what is challenging, what is touching them, what is calling for a response. So when you enter a church, like we look at the space with our eyes and oftentimes we'll just zero in on a little place, a little piece of the church where we go and sit or a piece of art that is that reaches us or touches us. All, like a certain dialogue begins or opens up for us. It's, it's a way of prayer that doesn't happen only in the head, but a prayer that is enfleshed. It's with the people. And at the same time, photography makes it possible for us to capture, like you can see on your screen right now, um, a very festive moment. There are images here where you've got a 
a group of young girls in Haiti who are helping one of their friends, one of the students, to get across the big wall. Uh, I don't know, they were probably paying ball or something and the ball went over the wall. But it might not seem important, but could very well symbolize collaboration, helping one another. There's kind of something beautiful, even though it is very simple. And in the world in which we live, you and I is filled with images like this, whereby it is good for us to just stop, look, go back, experience it, reread in a way, to go back and revise or review it in our heads. And many of us have presented images to our parents, to our friends, people that are close to us to say, look, look at what my eyes have seen. I want to share this with you. I, have, I want to share an experience with you. As if we were saying, this, these are the footsteps of the Lord of when I was in this place and what I experienced. And so this way of doing things is interesting, but can also, how can I say, um, like many other things, kind of like be refined or worked on. The best way for us, I see a, a, a port of entry, a door. The first way would be with your phones or if you've got a camera um, to do a little bit of contemplation and observation of the place around you, of your milieu, just to go out into your neighborhood and walk around and see, look, and, and take pictures of things that you like, that you find pretty, that you, you enjoy. In a second stage, the idea would be to choose from these images the ones that are more meaningful, that speak to you, and, and prepare it like, and prepare yourself adequately to enter into prayer. So the sequence that I want to share with you now, with another sequence here up on my screen, where I try to explain to you the way that we should go about this, a methodology. When we pray, when we pray with, um, with an image, with a picture or with an artwork, we have to put ourselves in an attitude of prayer in a prayerful attitude open to that encounter with god and the points i'm sharing with you are really basic points relating to the prayer or to the contemplation of a of a picture or an artwork to try to understand what the artists wanted to convey as a message through that uh, artwork and why the artist is communicating such thing to us, why this picture is important for me, and why am I attracted to that artwork, if it's an artwork or a picture? What uh, does it convey to me, and how can it uh, feed, nourish me, my spirit or my prayer? And then I put myself in silence, in silence so that I can be open to the presence of God and see how the Lord is uh, acting through that artwork. How it relates to me, how it calls me. And we can ask also for the, the light of the spirit to understand the mystery that is brought forth by this picture or this artwork. Sometimes uh, artworks refer to the life of Christ or uh, a passage of the gospel. So no matter the picture 
or the piece that you choose, it's important to ask for um, a, a light to be more sensitive to what you feel within, to be more aware of uh, the reason why your eyes are attracted to one aspect or another in that picture and what type of emotion it raises. Am I at peace? Am I at all? When I look at this uh, picture, am I afraid to name the emotion that I feel? And um, is there anything important that I can take note of? And when we're looking and when we're contemplating an artwork, it's important to uh, focus, to observe the, the shapes of the objects, the, the colors, is it a scene of daily life, and uh, how the space is organized, for example, observing the details and observing with attention everything that I see before my eyes. Are there characters? Are there objects that are uh, figurative or the positions and try to analyze, try to understand what is going on in that image. Now, this contemplation exercise is often done with uh, simplicity. So today I take the time to develop on that, but anything that we do like for anything that we do for the first time, there are more instructions for the first time. But as you practice with time, you see that uh, all those instructions become really a, a process that do not become automatic, but they are eventually, they will be integrated and you will, be, you will get used to uh, proceed that way, to have that approach. So when I look at this picture, what is the meaning of that biblical scene, for example? Or what is the meaning of that uh, image for my life? <clears throat> and at the end of the prayer, as often, uh, through contemplation, we also take a time at the end to address to God, to our Father, to Jesus, or the Holy Spirit, or to God, through Mary, or to one of the characters of the scene that uh, we just uh, prayed with or contemplated, <clears throat> and the artwork that we were concentrating on. Often there's an emotion also that comes with it, a feeling of um, gratefulness, something that happens, that comes at the end, and it's also important to name that uh, feeling and to close the prayer by offering uh, that feeling to the Lord. So those uh, avenues are intended to, uh, to nourish our prayer. And like any activity that is new, the advice that I can give you is to, to try simply not losing patience with yourself or not having too many expectations or waiting until you have a perfect picture before you begin praying. No, the idea is to pray inspired by the, the daily life. It's like when you live, you experience an important thing, an important event, whether it's at a personal level or professional level. At the end of the day, or after that event, before you go to sleep, often you come back mentally to what you've experienced. You have, uh, um, you carry out an exercise of reviewing or rereading the event. And so it's in with that spirit that we are invited to review the activity. And the prayer, the meditation or contemplation with uh, photography is helpful. Uh, it's because it's an art of, uh, for praying and an exercise, like Ignatius told us many times, it's an exercise that 
is perfectable. It begins with a desire, a desire to put ourselves in a prayerful state and to pursue in time, to continue in time. It's not a, a, a temporary activity or moment. So it's important to have uh, not to have too many expectations at the beginning so that you don't feel discouraged and try out to see whether this approach is uh, working with you. It might work, it might not work. And if it's not the case, there are other ways that you can also enter uh, into prayer in a different way, in a way that is more uh, that is working better with you. It's like when you're uh, trying on a garment. If it fits uh, perfect, then uh, you go ahead. Otherwise, you adjust. You try another one. So not everybody likes Ignatian contemplation. And it doesn't really matter. Maybe, maybe you prefer Lectio Divina or the reading of a biblical text or uh, the rosary praying, the rosary. So the best way to pray is the way that brings you closer to God. In your opinion, what works well to bring you closer to, to God? And this will be the best way to pray. The spiritual experience of Ignatius and photography Well, if you think back to Ignatius, he was looking for God. He's been searching for God and he's been trying a thousand ways to, to look for God, to search. And he didn't have, of course, any camera back then because photography didn't exist. However, he was compelled by a very powerful imagination. And um, he would see himself journeying in his life and he was imagining the world where he was. So what were his aspirations before he began, before he, be, he became a pilgrim? Well, he had several moments in his life where he developed, he grew from the image, starting from the image that he had of himself or the image that he was uh, uh, called to be, to become in serving God. So in that Ignatius experience, the relationship uh, and the development in that relationship of God is fundamental. Ignatius, Ignatius was, uh, was also shaped by those times. It was, there were times of expansion, of movement. So the conversion of Ignatius won't be only focused on living the action that he was used to in his time, but also it was moved by the search for the presence of God and the action of God and how to join that action. So he was looking for that action of God. So Ignatius was very attentive to his environment, but he was very attentive to what he was experiencing, living in himself, within. So his feeling, connecting with his feeling and his emotions. And uh, he would see God at work in himself in that way. It was even clearer when he was looking at uh, Christ from the lens of salvation of the Hebrew people until the life, the public life of Jesus and the cross and the resurrection. So it's through uh, Jesus that he understands how to contemplate the work of God in his salvation work. So it is not about being active or activist at any price. It's really to discover the action of God and to join that action and to move in the footsteps of God. Now, he had that desire to win, to gain the honor, because the Ignatian spirituality is a spirituality of desire. In the world where we live in, we are overwhelmed with images. 
sometimes we even become insensitive to what our eyes may see and may perceive because we're really bombarded by images and images may be a trap for some persons because the image is also the way is is a vehicle to sell products for example image can be can be an aspiration to a certain form of beauty it can be also a way to uh, make you want things that are not necessarily good however there's something that uh, deserves to be discovered in the image and it's a way to um, to become vigilant to what we are watching and also vigilant about the way we are looking at things the there are types of ads that I may be more attentive to because I'm more interested, for example, uh, action, sports, uh, baseball, hockey, anything spectacular, well, my attention would be uh, grasped somehow. And then instead, there are other images that I'm less maybe interested in. So this is what I know about myself. So it can be also an exercise to figure out what attracts your attention, what catches your attention in the, the social medias, in the newspapers that you read. Is there anything that really catches your attention more than other things? And the spiritual exercises are aiming at uh, redirecting our desire to, towards God. And... Uh, understanding our attachments to um, move away from those attachments with the help of uh, Christ. Not because they're bad, but because I have to understand what I want to do with my life. Where am I called to? Uh, where do I want to focus my attention, my determination, my love and my will or my talents, my skills? So to which cause, to which uh, use? I want to focus them. So those are things, those are decisions of a personal nature. But at the same time, it's important to uh, get to those decisions eventually, to make them. The conversion of Ignatius was uh, a crucial one. And one of the most important turning points is to understand that the will of Ignatius is really intentional. While being um, a voluntarist or wanting to stick to our things is to somehow is to move away from God. In his experience, there's a meeting between two wills, uh, the Ignatian one, that is to consecrate oneself to God, and the will of God. So bringing the two together so that that might be an alignment, a union, something that will bear fruits. And that spirituality still speaks to the men and women of today. This spirituality is very attentive to have anything that we carry within us, something that is singular, that is unique. Today, we are living in a culture that values much the person, the personal development, the spirituality that can uh, be focused on that and then can be refocused on Christ in order to discover what Christ wants from me in my own life. And the spiritual exercises and contemplation have the power to reach out to the persons to the individuals in their desire for personal fulfillment because that's the where it all begins to be called towards something that is greater than us with all the possible ambiguity that comes with it so the spiritual exercises are accessible to anybody not only to a few persons who we consider as specialists uh, who are working uh, within uh, at the Jesuit Center or uh, who are uh, animating some uh, apps, for example, to guide in prayer. It's beyond that. And 
it really addresses to any man or woman. And remember that we're living in a world where we value the emotions, what we feel. So, again, this is an experience that uh, relates to the emotions to understand, to better understand those emotions and to make the difference between what can lead me to 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 god and what can me can move me away from god so it's a spiritual experience that i'm invited to join or to dwell into to um, be part of a, a deeper relationship and through photography or art contemplation i'm also invited to get to know myself better what I like, what motivates me, what energizes me, what helps me um, move toward other people and uh, towards the, the world around me. So Ignatius also invites us to observe the world and to understand what is our place, our role in that beautiful and great world. So the invitations I want to extend to you is to, to experience that, to experience that world that is immense and beautiful. So man is born, is created to uh, praise the Lord, to, um, to, vener to, to for reverence to the Lord and to pursue eventually the end or the purpose for which man was a woman was created so he pursued that in as much as it's helpful to his end and those uh, any obstacle to that end should be removed from his way so in those elements ignatius invites the person who wants to get closer to god he invites him, her, to observe the magnitude, the beauty of this world around us that is uh, great and beautiful, but is also filled with imperfections, with flaws. The, the war in Ukraine is one of those examples and other challenges that the world is experiencing. The idea is not to look at the world with a filter that makes this world uh, more beautiful or makes you see everything in uh, uh, the a beautiful with a beautiful lens but also looking at the world with its suffering with the solidarity of people who are expressing uh, beauty in different ways and in that deepening by being a little bit more attentive to what surrounds us by doing that, there's something that will allow us to grow, to observe, and to learn how to open up a dialogue with uh, creation, with our neighbor. And this is very important, to be aware of the environment around us. The crisis that we live can also, well, can uh, bear violence, and we see people against one another, but at the same time, we can help one another to, uh, to overcome those uh, moments by helping one another, by encouraging others around us to work together for reconciliation. Sending out a text message with a picture maybe that you took that is particularly significant for you might be a way to uh, greet the, the the person the other person in a virtual way yes but it's a way to express the attention that you have for the other person in the past people would write to one another would send uh, physical mail but today with the technology the use of phones internet and email we are able to communicate full-time now doesn't mean that it can substitute can be a substitute to the real encounter and the dialogue however this 
way to send a message and an image, a picture, may help you to share a moment that is important for you, a joy. <clears throat> and on the, other, <clears throat> on the other end, we never know how the person will welcome this greeting or this hello. Well, it has somehow a value. It is important because that's something that is conveyed in that uh, feeling that is conveyed when you're sending out something that you deem important or beautiful to another person, because it's part of your expressing your sensitivity. So I invite you to, to take those pictures, to take pictures around you. And I would uh, send you that, that challenge to all of you who are listening to that conference. I'm offering that for the, the coming days, a different moment for you. I'm suggesting to uh, take pictures of your community, for example, of the environment you live in. And then choose one of those pictures that speaks more to you and pray with that image, with that picture. It's about practice. And I invite you to get out of your, your own uh, zone, comfort zone and pray with your pictures. And then share those prayers or those reflections with persons that are close to you. Not to receive the compliments uh, regarding your pictures might be part of the, the reaction, the answer, but more importantly to share a moment or an emotion that uh, you felt when you took the picture. Hoping that if you pray with art and photography, um, hoping that you may have demystified what it means praying with uh, pictures or with images. So I invite you to stay to stay with us for a question period. In a few minutes, I'd be happy to, to answer to your questions that you, you may have as I was uh, making that presentation. So thank you. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Father Rizzetto, for this conference. Thank you for introducing to those who are less familiar to this new way of praying. Thank you for helping us discovering that world and uh, a different way to enter in relation with others. During the conference, many questions were sent, especially on the icons. Two questions on the icons. Is there a connection between photography and the icons? And where to situate, where do we locate or situate the icons in this form of prayer? It's a good question. I think that iconography, iconography is really part of the, the prayer of believers for, for always. So we may see the, the, the beginnings of using the images for praying. There's iconography. So the way we pray with icons is almost universal. Often when uh, people have icons at home uh, that are usually precious uh, pictures or icons, they are often placed in special places in order to, uh, to, um, to pray with those objects. So yes, if the image speaks to you, it's certainly the same approach. And I would add that in many chapels, in many churches, there are uh, stained glasses that embellish our churches. But at the same time, those images tell a story. It may be the face of saints or um, different uh, moments of the life of Jesus that are presented in those um, in those artworks so then when we visit other places we tend to compare the different uh, artworks on the same theme then we have a comment photography is is a way to reach out to a person with dementia creating um, a, 
a book of souvenirs, of pictures and souvenirs is a way to help that person when she's, uh, she has dementia. Yes, in the sense that photography might be a, a very interesting uh, tool, especially for persons who have this type of issues, but also persons with mental health issues or persons who are losing their, their memory. When we show a picture to a, to a person of a certain age, and when that person recognizes something, then it's like a door that opens to part of uh, the person's history or life. Things that are trapped in, in his or her memory, but also caught in that image to make memory of, when we make memory of Christ, who lived and who gave his life for us during the Eucharist, well, for us, it's also about uh, making memory of events, events that were very important in our lives. It's the same process. So images like photography helps us uh, talking about ourselves directly and indirectly, focuses on the life of the person, but at the same time, it's an object that is shared between two individuals. So it's a very interesting way to enter into a relation or a dialogue with another person. Then when you take pictures, do you think that you... And what is the impact on your prayer, that movement? That's a very interesting question. And I'll go with... Uh, a simple advice and you might take that advice and apply it whether it's convenient or not for you but don't think that when i i go around with my camera i hide behind my camera and i'm not in contact with the environment that's not the case sometimes we see uh, people getting to a new place and it's like they don't take the time to breathe and they they are immediately behind their camera capturing uh, pictures, images, thinking that maybe later on they will leave again their uh, journey in that way. So uh, that's not the approach. Sometimes I realize that I want to show something about myself to another person sometimes i put myself in that situation for a picture and i tell my friends uh, i'm here in uh, i'm living in quebec i i'm somewhere else i want to take a picture of that other place and and share it with my friends that's different but ask all always ask yourself to what extent you're disappearing behind the camera to leave the space uh, for the image or not. That there's no good way, but it's really a matter of understanding what I want to do with the moment I'm capturing. What is my intention? So, when you have a camera on the street and you see something, you don't have so much time to reflect on what to do or not. You just react and you capture the image often that's the way it happens there's somebody who's doing oil painting and says that he can contemplate the greatness and magnificence of human uh, creation but also the destruction of our common home is it something that you perceive as well i think photography doesn't have a monopoly of beauty or the manifestation of beauty or the magnificence of creation all types of art together become like a vehicle that lead to the one thing so i think that there are people for each different form you can't just say okay just photography is the best way no but i am someone who decides i i like to or I like to make sketches, or I don't paint. So I like to take pictures. It's not photography that's important. It's to see what is best for you. And does it become for others, like these images, do they become 
a vehicle that you use to reach others? And will it be the good one? And that people will respond favorably to what you're saying. And there are people to whom we want to show all types of things and who don't feel the same interest that we have on the picture or on the painting or whatever. And that's fine. Another question, can the arts be a means of evangelization, especially when it's time to converse with people, to have conversations with people that don't necessarily know about a nation spirituality or of the same faith? Well, let me just tell you, he says, that I just want to come back to the churches and how, how they were built, what they were able to transmit, and try to find what's what is it trying to say, right? What what did the artists or how did they kind of like deal, innovate, demonstrate beauty through their architecture and through the various um, means for painting or art or sculpture? I am. Okay, I like to look at nice things and I, I do enjoy nice art. But when you look at the many works of art, my gosh, sculpture, paintings, um, sculpture with wood and all different types of mediums for painting and other, there's an intention there to want to produce something beautiful. And there are places where it is more beautiful than others. So we become very sensitive to that. And when we don't understand something, sometimes we allow the author explain this to us in his own, with his own words, how he was able to go forward or how he proceeded with it. It allows us to appreciate the work of the artist. Mm -hmm. How can you choose the art that we're going to practice or how do we know where God is calling us to develop our gifts in general, but also particularly? Well, for me, it's kind of like trial and error, right? Without um, writing a biography, when I started taking pictures, I liked images. I loved images on TV, in movies, uh, in all types of televised series. And so the, the camera became for me when I I had an album and when I was in grade school, you know, and I used to take pictures of animals and I still have that animal album. <laughs> and so there was no beauty in there, but it's filled with naï naïveté. That was at a certain moment in my life and I keep it, I look at it, it makes me smile when I see it. So I say to myself, just try very simply and, you know, without any big fuss, see how you are going to continue, or maybe you're going to feel attracted to another form of art. Sometimes you don't always choose the first thing, you know, you have to experiment with things. It's often in continuity where we can leave something aside, pick it up again later so the idea isn't always to do photography as being the first thing to do but that photographer photography can be that if that's if it's helping you to take steps in your spiritual life next question have you ever met or directed groups that do this with contemplation outside with pictures is it practical does it work or is it better to be alone? Well, I've got to tell you, he says, that I've never really directed a group that was specifically meant like organizationally, okay, we're meeting Thursday, let's say, to do such and such a thing. But anecdotally, uh, a person that I am corresponding with or that I have a relationship does belong to a photo club. And this photo club um, 
these people will get together and discuss techniques but even more so they will talk of the significance of the topic or the subject that they're talk that they're dealing with and there's kind of like a blend there or a mix of something technical but also of feeling of, of of the light and you know helping each other to discover the light the shadows and everything else well the groups do exist and you probably have photo clubs close by to you and some have experts among them others know some are some are beginners you have to be able to find your niche in that but so far from time to have be the leader of a group no but i think it might be a very interesting means to one morning go out and come back and share our pictures and we have the manresa center perhaps okay i was going to say that says fanny yes another question we have here um someone who likes to take pictures and they're asking how can we discern between surface oh this is a good question mark says because many of you know media types such as instagram and facebook and then you get this mix with regards to the image are we are we what are we doing kind of like is it something like the image is more noble and purer that brings things together what are we what are we doing are we creating kind of like a scene of our daily lives or am i constantly doing this in my in my own life and now we each one of us is invited to discern how I, I i make use of this how i'm using it that there are people that i know who are part of an extended group okay of friends and they have a tendency to kind of like put themselves in there now i'm not that interested in in that myself it doesn't mean that i don't like them or that they're not my friends but personally speaking i'm not there kind of like to put the focus on me mm -hmm. to make a beautifully uh, a very aesthetic picture of my group or someone in it so there you have to keep a balance there how do you take pictures of people when things are called to evolve over time how can you take a picture of someone and be respectful of kind of like something just happened spontaneously and you like it, but you've got to be respectful of the people, of the person. A few years ago, um, says Mark, there was a conflict that was reported in the newspapers where we were saying that people had to accept that they were, somebody was taking their picture at the same time. Um, um, I don't know if I'm right here. And, Oh, I don't want to induce anybody into error, but it's in the, it's the way that you're going to use these pictures. If I find a family that's walking together in the park, and finally the daddy picks up the, the little child and kind of like lifts them up and, you know, with high up in the air with their arms and I take a picture, but I keep that for myself. I don't see that's a problem. However, if I'm using this picture afterwards and I'm putting that up on some type of social media, well, no, no, see that person doesn't know I was taking the picture. I thought it was nice. I took the picture. I liked it, but it's not, I cannot take that picture and disseminate that over the, over the different means of social media, eat social media without the consent of that person before putting that out into fiber space. Are you familiar with the photo language approach? I got to tell you that it, not really, but 
what comes to me in, right now in the way of an answer would be through the Ignatian ex exercises very often and also at different times if we want to get to know people especially young people uh, there was an activity that we called photo language i don't know i don't know what but anyway for that type of thing thank you for presenting yourself with the help of a picture or or images so we find all types of uh, pictures in magazines we cut them out and we invite this young person to choose pictures to say Talk to, talk to us about yourself. What are your desires? What are your hopes, your aspirations? And so that gives the person the possibility of revealing something intimate through the way of the image. And so these images happen between the person and the person who is asking, but there's something between the two, these two people. And I'd say it creates a certain security without people feeling compromised or if think that you know something might be revealed of their intimacy and if it's well done there could be a great deal of you do it in a spirit of respect and of trust that's a different story i i know the question is not to de to 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 define this the language of pictures but that's what i've got to tell you about that really Another commentary on the presentation as a whole and a clarification question. I don't hear in what you say that Ignatian spirituality through photographer, uh, through photography is taking a picture of something that we lived and we have a moment with God by trying to capture this moment and trying to perhaps keep it and using it later as a remembering this moment with God. What do you think this has to say to us? It, is this a summary of your of your talk? Yes, says Mark. But we could go back to our family history and to our family archives, like, and you know, it doesn't have to be very sophisticated. But you can find a family picture at a certain point that was taken, where we want to pray with our family, and it's the image that kind of like is it's it's there for us. So this definition kind of like I, I i go out for a walk i take the picture i try to pray with it in order to better understand to better be able to see and to feel god's love well we can also do it with pictures that are more familiar so i would say yes the summary of this process re reminds me of that but i mean it can take on many many different forms so when we're talking about uh, family pictures, Summer was saying that to go back and look at pictures is a wonderful way for us to get beyond a difficulty or a sad moment we are living or experiences. Like if someone, a member of the family, you know, dies or something, it's an opportunity for us to do that. Answer, yes. I am very much in agreement with this way of doing things and in community, it has happened to me to take a good pictures of a good number of my brothers who have died. So it was good because we said, okay, together we're going to take your picture. The person was sick and I had a good relationship with the person. I told the person, it's clear that this very simple picture would produce a pic would produce a photo that would be his kind of like what we would have like you know when he dies like a death card and so it's a time of relationship and you know sometimes we laugh and everything but i looked at the person and i can see in the eyes of the persons of that person kind of like in the eyes of that person it's a time of deep sharing so it sends me back to when i was with the person and so it could also be a way to to look at a friend or someone family member who has died someone is asking do you know if there is a way or is there a tool that can be used 
to express Ignatian spirituality through through photography. I don't think I'm I'm getting the pick and the question. Do you know of a tool or something that we could use in order to use photography as a means to express the Ignatian exercises? Well, you know, I have to say yes and no. I don't want to make a commitment here, but everything that has to do with the basic foundation and principles, and I was saying earlier how important it was to see or to look at how or in what manner you see God at work. In your own respective milieu in the world. I do believe that substitute for the um, text that we could use, I'd say no. But there's something interesting there. If I express the, the topic of poverty or generosity of altruism, that can be translated via a picture. But how through music are we able to really honor a gospel text, you know? That's another medium. For certain aspects, I think the answer is yes. But for others to say that exclusively, I think it would be innovative if it already exists. Maybe it already exists and I'm not aware of it. But um, if there are things that do exist, I'd be very interested in them. I want to come about to a message that I don't think I expressed properly. Someone talks about the dichotomy. I can contemplate the beautiful beauty and wonder of the human or the, the building of a house or the destruction of nature. Anything to say about that? You know what? I, I don't know. Like where to begin answering that or using that image. Uh, um, the picture is a medium to help us capture a specific moment. Like since the beginning, we've been saying it has to be a joyful situation. The loving, a loving family or the beautiful sunrise or sunset, it has to be beautiful and joyful. But the world in which we live is not always filled with happy circumstances. There are fires. And there are buildings that are totally destroyed. There are some, you know, can we, we hear the sirens now in the place of war. So, you know, these are opportunities that are offered us to stop, to meditate. So the idea isn't to Photoshop the world, not to make a catalog of scenes, but rather to have this large number of pictures that can be witnesses of certain effects. For, for example, with the ecology, we can put, uh, we can superimpose um, beautiful budding trees and then also in the same picture have a dump. Now it's not nice, but a dump is necessary and they're present. But I think it can lead us to a reflection as to how my eye, as a citizen, the impact that I have or that I am leaving behind to hide something, it's to hide something, but you have to do it with a certain amount of finesse. But if it's going to help people to think, why not? A comment says that there is a huge painting of the Jesuits at Manresa that kind of like depict the four weeks of the spiritual exercises. Oh, I'm going to go and look at that, says Mark, because right now we're in a process of moving. And so at the center, we have boxes that have been put in storage. And because during in April and May, we're going to a new space. And so we'll be, I'll be very happy to become aware of that painting with the four different weeks depicted. 
somebody said i've been collecting photos for 40 years i think it's a wonderful place to remember so i have a feeling that your presentation really has kind of like um helped us a lot to kind of rediscover or unearth all of these things in us now listen if i did one thing only that's exactly what i wanted to do this in memory of you know to be the memory of in a way that when you take a photo you're not quite sure what's that's going to evoke in afterwards but it's only when you go back to it a little bit like life experiences when you can draw meaning from these experiences and interpret them oftentimes the sense and the interpretation will evolve with time a little bit like a family that sees the uh, a child being born and then you look at the child a little bit later and a little bit later afterwards so a thousand and one things come to our mind it's the same child maybe the way he dresses will change his posture will change but the narrative will be totally different and the whole relationship that the parent has with this child the family might have with this child etc so i don't see any other questions says fanny so we'd like to thank you from the the depths of our heart for sharing this form of prayer and also some examples of your own archives thank you thank you for having offered me the privilege and i thank all of the participants once again and also the organizing team for sure jose fanny and all of the others that are hidden in the background and like ants are busy working away on their computers to make this moment possible for all of us a, a time of sharing a treasure that does not belong to us.